Man, y'all know we here for a special occasion. My shit been, eh. Last time I got a chop is April. We're going to get into that and tell y'all why, for sure. All right, today we here. As you know, I'm training for Hector Luis Garcia um, for the WBA Championship of the World. Um, and normally I don't get my hair cut during camp, so... That's <laughs> crazy. And I'm, letting, I'm here to let y'all know that the fight is going to take place later than it's supposed to. So just to get right into it, we had a contract the date for August 26th. Um, that was when the fight was supposed to happen. And before I get into that, let me introduce y'all right here. Well, they can introduce themselves. So we have A-Side Talk, A-Side Boxing Talk right here with me. Um, boxing, yeah, Truth, my man is Truth. Boxing Media, and then we have my man, my good man, we got, we got Childhood Ties, my man yeah. Cedric. My man yeah. Cedric McFadden, yeah. All right, champ, man, so. Medical excuse, man. Obviously, me being somebody that's a hardcore, I know the business of boxing. Um, when you hear the word medical excuse, man, it is, do we do we feel like that's a medical excuse or is that a business of boxing excuse? Man, to me, I think, I definitely think it's, uh, I wouldn't even say business. I think it's to save his ass for real. To me, I don't think he was in the gym. You gotta think, when the purse bid came, I mean, when the, when the mandatory notice came out, we were supposed to strike a deal and fight by May 20th. If, like, if you've seen the official announcement of the mandatory status, we were supposed to fight May 20th. You gotta think it's July already, two months after that date. So that's exactly, like, we all, I mean, but then again, like, all right, so we collectively came to extend the negotiations because we thought we were going to strike a deal the whole time. I just think they was, you know what I'm saying, playing the fiddle so they can get more time for him to be in the gym and get a camp going, I guess. But, I mean, it is what it is. I just think he, you know, eating that tank money up and, and you know, enjoying life. And which I don't blame him, but come on, man. Like, you got obligations, bro. You're a champ. So, you now, know. Would, would you not be on Golden Boy no more? Um, so, would you be in a free agent? Um, a lot of people would say that's ASAP politics. Do you do you think is that some some of the kind of stuff that you're dealing with right now? You feel yeah. like if you were signed, it, it might not go like that. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely for sure. I just think uh, they. I mean, they had the opportunity to sign me, and obviously, you know, we had talks, but you know, what they was dishing out wasn't really what I was trying to receive. So, I mean, you know, my, me and my dad, we stood, we stood tall on our own, and my father really, like, stood on all 10 and backed my play. Like, he went down there and bid it on the fight himself. So, like, shout out to my father. Like, I really, like, that really, 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 like, struck me. Like, I'm like, man, like, I already know he would do something like that because that's my dad, but when you really look at it and the midst of things, like, Man, he was ready to get that, get it on at home. Yeah. Put it on, put it on for me at home. Like sacrifice, you know, his own dough. Like my father ain't no big time promoter. Yeah. His own dough. Mm -hmm. So. How, how that how that make you feel now? Though? Like as far as like, I mean, shit, just going about your career that, that your father made that move for you. It's, that shit just make me feel like, you know, I'm lucky to have a have a dad like him. On top of that, like someone who believe in me wholeheartedly like that because we, like I said, we standing on our own. Like, it's all in or nothing. So that's what it is. Like, mind you, you know, there's always the possibility of X, Y, and Z. Mind you, we ain't, we ain't going for that. We ain't going for no losing or nothing like that. But there's always the possibility of that shit. So when it go, when it come down to it, it's just like, he really like investing his his whole like everything into me. So, gotta go out, gotta go out <laughs> bro. Got on life. It ain't no it ain't, it ain't no other option but to get this month all the way out of here. So um, I saw an interview with your uh, with your pops. Yeah. Um, he said in 2006, um, y'all started no excuses. He said um, it's no excuses because one lose a draw. We're gonna put it in. Yeah, when for we sure. Draw. That's what it is. Um, 
A lot of fighters in your position, we know they was trying to make Hector and Gary. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of fighters would have took some step aside money. You know, they would have let the play happen. Why didn't you go that route? I worked my ass off to get here, man. My main goal in boxing, my number one goal, is to be a world champion. So why would I, why would I get at the doorstep and then let somebody else walk through my door? That's crazy. That's that's super crazy. It ain't about the money. A nigga got money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, it, it ain't about that right now. At least, at least for me, I'm trying to get that. That strap gonna set me up to change my life, my son's life. Shit, my father, my mother, it's going to be, it's going to change a lot of people around me. And I'm going to be the key to that. So why would I, why would I let that go? Now, as far as being in camp and training and working, um, how is it having a ramp up camp thinking that you got a, a date set for a fight? You got to kind of peaking at a certain time. You thinking, oh, I'm ready. This We're going to have this fight signed in a month or so. And, and then having to tail it back down and having to go back up. How, how is that? How, how is that affecting your mental? Well, I'm, I'm very strong mentally. It's not affecting me, but it is just like, it's annoying. Like, yeah. like you know, you know we supposed to have been like, handle this. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, like, it's very important for me to not be going full blast. You gotta think, I, I thought I was fighting, I thought I was gonna be fighting ever since March. Yeah. So we was already getting ready in March. Mm -hmm. We was definitely getting ready in April, but once we kind of figured like where they was going, we was like, ah, right, it's going to take a little longer. We slowed it down, and that's just the that's just the process of being a number one contender or a mandatory contender. It is the process. You gotta think. I could be in the different shoes. I could be in shit, Carlos Adonis shoes, and they wait and waiting. I could be Tim Zoo shoes, wait and waiting. You gotta think they've been waiting for what years. I mean, not Adam is. Adam has probably been waiting for probably like a year now. But I won the number one contender spot last J July. Yeah. It's been a year. Wow. It's been a year. You gotta think Tim Zhu been a champ, supposed to fight Charles now. Charlo fighting Canelo. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So yeah. I could be in worse positions, but at the end of the day, it's just like that revving the camp up and revving it back down. It's I know that it come with being a con the contender. Yeah. I know it come with that. So I'm not mad. It's just annoying. And I can't wait to get the belt so I can, yeah. so I can tell this nigga, man, this is what you get for making me wait. I'm gonna knock his ass out. Yeah. Nah, for real, bro. That should be blowing me. Man, he blowing me. You lie. know it, though, because like... You got like been messing up my trips. <laughs> you, see, you see what I'm saying? People, I'm like, yeah, I people, I people got scheduled trips, yeah. get tickets. Oh, I'm telling them I'm fighting in New York August 26th. They like, oh, all right, all right, all right. We about to book a hotel now, this and that. Next thing you know, this man saying he need a ex, he need 30, 45 days. So, and the WBA granted it too. So it's not like, it's not like it's some, you know, something that ain't happening. So I keep everybody posted for sure. Especially you, Mr. I wanna go everywhere. Yeah, I go my trip, but when I put my trip, I don't do the insurance. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not pressed no. Nah, bro. for real, bro. <laughs> but but nah man, um do you do you think it's and you said obviously you said you're mentally strong, you you can handle what's going on, but I've been seeing interviews with you, and I've been seeing you saying you're gonna knock this dude out, you're gonna get rid of him. It's part of that frustration, respectfully, it's part of that frustration, because you really know he can't fuck with you, and he, and he holding on to what you got? I mean, you could, I could say that, and I, my shit is disrespectfully. Yeah. When it comes to that skill, man, he, it, ain't, it ain't there with mine. He's a good fighter, and I definitely respect him as a man, um, because it take a man to do what we do in the ring. Yeah. But, he can't fuck with me, bro. Yeah. And I'm a, I am promise y'all I'm going to show that. Mm -hmm. I promise y'all I'm going to show that. He cannot fuck with me. Now, now to kind of, now to kind of bring things full circle, right? You fought Jamel Heron mm -hmm. uh, for the, I believe it was the WBO, yeah. uh, 130 strap at the time. That was your first 12 round fight. That was my you know first 12 round fight. I was just turned 24. Yeah, I mean, and, and a lot of people don't, I mean, especially the people that's not boxing hard for it, yeah. people don't understand how, how, how real that is for your first 12 round to be a championship fight. Um, a lot of people might say that 
you maybe you should have took a fight, a 12 rounder before that. Maybe you should have took steps off and that wouldn't let another fight happen, which you didn't do. I right. Right. you came up short. Um, do you feel like uh, on a divine level, maybe maybe this is the reason why this fight is kind of taking a little bit long. It's allowing you to think a little bit more, allowing you to focus a little bit more, lock in a little bit more before you actually go ahead and take that test again. Uh, a part of me want to say no, and you want to know why? I essentially, I mean, to a lot of people, when I fought Jamel, I was a kid. Like, um, I didn't believe so, obviously, because I'm, you know, I'm confident and all that. But uh, that fight taught me a lot, even though I've been boxing for since I was nine years old. You know what I'm saying? So that fight taught me a whole lot because I know that this, like, it's nothing going to be given to me. Yeah. At the end of the day, I gotta be ready whether the day is tomorrow or the day is a month from now or two or whatever the case may be. Like, I, I learned that on top of that, like you gotta take that shit in boxing. Like, yeah. my, like it's different from seeing it. I done seen it plenty of times, but to actually be on the other side of it, it's coming up so short, like coming up close and short to a lifetime goal of yours, it's just like, that shit hurt. But at the end of the day, like, I banked, I, I banked that hurt in my heart. Yeah. And I let it fuel me to be the best that I can be. And, and on top of that, work harder, smarter, mm-hmm. and not to allow, like, not to allow those opportunities to, to slip. You gotta think, I'm fighting for my second world championship, even though I earned it, a lot of people don't get, the, get those opportunities. A lot of people don't get those opportunities. Like um, like my good, like my man Hammer, my good man Hammer, he fought for a world championship young too, mm-hmm. and, he, and he lost. But he hasn't fought for a world championship yet, and some people would view him as a, a higher uh, contender at his weight class than me, because he's he definitely more popular than me. But um, but like he didn't fight for world championship yet again. And I'm not saying that he didn't earn it. He did, he did, he doing all the right things to fight for another championship. But it's just how it's just how it works. And like you said, divine timing. I think this this is for me. It's meant for me. And I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna make sure it's meant for me. Yeah. Yeah, and, and to keep that in perspective too, what you talk about with Alex and Lubin. Um, after the Charlo fight, he won some fights. He fought three eliminators before yes. he lost to Fundora. Exactly. And um, and but but while we while we on memory lane, man, that that Jamel Heron fight, uh, I'm watching the fight. Obviously, you know I'm mm-hmm. cheering on you. Oh, you've been one of my favorite fighters. We had that conversation. Yeah, thanks. Um, the end of the eleventh, man. You hurt this guy, man. You hurt this. You hurt this guy bad, man. Um, again, I know you said you mentally tough. But how how often do you replay that hurting him bad at the end of that round and kind of knowing like damn I, the opportunity was right there I, I could have got it is. how often do you replay that this is just man I do they even shit me and me and my father watched it not too long ago right like a couple <laughs> weeks ago yeah. if we just both like we, after we hit him we just like damn like <laughs> like his ass was gone but it was what like ten seconds left in yeah. the round yeah. and. The inex, not the inexperience yeah. on finishing, mm-hmm. kind of kicked in. I went crazy, but mind you, I threw another, I threw another one that just missed his yeah. ass <laughs> like this, <laughs> just missed his ass like. But man, he did, he did a hell of a job of staying on his feet. Even though, all right, look, you know what's crazy? The referee came and hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me look at the camera. The referee came in the locker room before the fight, explaining the rules and shit, right? He specifically said, if the ropes hold you up after you got hit with a blow, that that's going to be count as a knockdown, and I'm going to start counting. Why the hell he ain't counting the (laughs) ring? Come on, bro. He was on the rope. What? You you remember, bro? He he did a stinky leg in there, fella. I ain't talking shit, Jamel. You know we cool and all that, right? I'm not copping on nothing like that either, but, but, <laughs> but, but, bruh, the ropes held him up. He literally flew into the ropes. If the ropes wasn't there, he would have fell out the ring. So that's what, 
The rapper you on my shit list. I forget his name. <laughs> I forgot his name with you on my shit list. Because that would have been a knockdown and I would have I think it would have been a majority draw. Why well, no two judges had No 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 I right, right, you're right. It would have been a draw on, I would have won on one card. I would have lost split decision. Yeah, you might. I would have lost yeah. split decision. Yeah. I would have won 114, 113 on one card. Yeah. And then uh, I would have lost by two rounds on another, on, yeah. I think, on the yeah. other card. Yeah, 117 on the other. Yeah, which is some yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Some yeah. fucking bullshit. But um, it is what it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a learning experience. I'm glad, that, like, you know what I'm saying? I can sit right here and talk about yeah. it because I know, like, you know what I'm saying? I came up short. And it is, it's, it is what it is now. But, I'm using all that to, yeah. I'm using all that to be, to be a dog, yeah. Yeah. Well, after that fight, um, obviously you had to build back up, you had to drop down in the rankings, you had to build back up. Um, what did you take from that fight in, in, into your next training camp or into your next sparring session? Uh, finishing. Finishing was a uh, key and starting earlier. Getting out, getting out the gates early. Cause I started a little slow on Jamil, um, and then being in the ring, like being in the ring, certain shit, like, cause it's not like he was hitting me all clean and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He was hitting me with some body shots mm -hmm. and and whatever. But um, I started real slow in that fight, and that was the reason why he probably built up such a lead because it's not like I was doing much yeah. and he wasn't doing much and they just like, all right, he the champion, let me give him the ring. Yeah. Yeah. politics, you know. You know yeah, you know. and I think it was fucking Veterans Day weekend, yeah. he a Marine, yeah. top rank. Yeah. It was, oh, it was on Veterans Day, yes. Um, he's a Marine, um, it's a top rank show, top rank fighter, world champion, so. You know what I'm saying? That's how that's just how boxing go. And I'm understanding of that. I'm not saying like, you know what I'm saying, that's bullshit or whatever. Like I'm understanding that. I know how boxing works. Yeah. So. Right. But how how it's like being 2020, you almost in a similar situation. Um, you're not a golden boy fighter, but you're a free agent. Yeah. You're coming on somebody else's platform, you know, this guy, he's a PBC guy. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think you gotta do different? I mean, that's in, what, in this fight. And that's what I told you. I gotta take that shit. Yeah. And trust me, the game we Trust me, the game plan we call culminating is just, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be beautiful. So as far as the game plan, how, what, you see, what you see from Hector that, that pulls a threat, if anything? Uh, yeah, it's like, so I don't know if they lying on his height or nothing. He got like long arms and yeah. shit. Like, yeah, he, he probably taller than me, um, for sure, but probably about, not by that much. But I want to say a threat. I mean, he's... He's just a good boxer. I don't want to say too many threats. Um, it don't look like he's cracking to me. Yeah, I don't know. And you know what I'm saying? It don't look like he's cracking to me. And you know, if he is, then I done been punched on before. Shit, I've been boxing since I was nine years old. So, um, it's, it's, if he could take that shit, he can be whatever he could dish, as long as he could take it then two times worse. You know, he might stay on his feet. Well, I mean, again, me, me being that hardcore uh, boxing fan, the new boxing media, yeah. um, he keep that lean hand low, man. He do. You got, you got that, that awkward look, man, that, that you like. He right there for the look, man. He <laughs> is. <laughs> he he I, is. I, I, I didn't visualize. I think that's the kill shot, man. Hey. He is for that look, man. That's what you call it. Hey, of course. If, if he do get hit with that moon ring, I hope y'all there to pick him up. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, we cranking it. We gonna be cranking that hook. So, not to give away the game plan or anything like that, but he does keep his hand, he keeps his lead hand low. Um, he got pretty good reaction, but for real, for real, y'all gonna see. Yeah. Y'all gonna see. Yeah. Trust me, cause I'm not, I, I was just about to spew into all his, like, you know what I'm saying, yeah, most of his little mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. nah, all right, so like, y'all, obviously, you, you're a boxer, but you're too big into boxing. Yeah. I'm not really that much into boxing, but like, yeah, that's my call man. it like an entertainer. Well, I'm, I'm a Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk basketball, I'm a Hoover, yeah. I'm a Hoover but like, all right, they call boxing like an entertainer sport, right? Yeah. So like, I see, I've been seeing a lot of people get called out, you're talking about name dropping, they just, talking crazy, you know, like trash talk. 
But like, me being a man, you don't do that, bro. Like, you don't do that. And like, I mean, I know that's not who you are personally, but it's like, do you think, you, do you think sometimes people go that route just to like, sell the fights and just like, I mean, just like trolling, like, cause it's fun. Like, if yeah, they do that, will they really be serious? Like, nah, you know what I mean? they do. I mean, like, that's what I'm saying. You know me, like, yeah. you know, I ain't no. I ain't no bothering nigga. Be doing all that. I'm not about to be doing all that unless I'm gonna smack somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't really like. I'm not into that boxing beef. Like, we boxing. All right, it's cool. We can we can rev the fight up. We can amp the fight up. Woo, woo, woo. But I don't know none of these niggas that be like, I don't like you. Yeah. Or you know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't. People be talking crazy. Unless people be talking crazy, like, like I ain't gonna lie. I don't like Andy Vincent. Andy Vincent always used to talk shit to me, right? Especially when he was undefeated. He used to talk shit to me. Then the motherfucker lost like five times. And I'd be wild and be like, oh yeah, you some shit. You know what I'm saying? Then it's like, all right, I'm picking on him. But mind you, we could have fought. He was like, what, supposed to be ranked higher than me? Then I was ranked higher than him in the WBO. We could have fought if he wanted to, but he was asking for the fights after the losses. I'm like, what am I going to fight you for? Like, come on, bro. Like, I don't... Like, it ain't nothing personal with none of these boxing. It's cool, it's boxing. So, if that's what's gonna happen as far as like, as far as like the fight being on this, on a, on a horizon or anything like, or even if I gotta call somebody out, like, I would do that. But I'm gonna let them know, like, keep it boxing, bro. Like, it's boxing. Like, keep it boxing. We, you know, we can get a little shove or whatever. You know what I'm saying? The weigh in. Or, but I don't know you to not. You know what I'm saying? Not like you. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't on that. Like, well, well, speaking of that, um, we in a clock generation, right? Yeah. Um, so, so e- easily, as you saying, like you humble and you gonna keep it a certain way. Easily, if you was popping it, you know what I mean? I mean, but I can, and and, and like, I, I will. I mean, I don't know. I think a lot of people don't really know me outside of boxing, yeah. so it's just like. How we are, how we talking right now? Yeah. Like that's how I am. Like I know, uh, I know it's a whole lot of motherfuckers that can't fuck with me in boxing. Yeah. Like, period. Like ranging from weight class down, right, weight class up. Yeah. Whole rack of them. But I don't. I'm not just gonna pee out there like broadcasting it. Like if, if we talking about it, then hey, yeah. Like I, I know 100 percent for a fact what's up with me. Yeah. So. But in this generation, when it's cool to chase the clock, if you was doing it, nobody would really say nothing. So what you think it is about you that keep you humble in the, in the, in the times where it's cool for people to, you know what I mean, be disrespectful, say the wrong shit? So I mean? yeah, nah, see, I ain't, I ain't on that. It's just how I was raised. And then like, so personally, we don't really know each other like that outside of yeah. boxing. Yeah. But he know me. Like he, he, I'm not going. I'm not going for that. Like he know me. It's just like it's just how I was raised. Like I ain't really like. It's consequences for certain shit that like sure. when it was, the way I was. I'm pretty sure you know. Yeah. The, coming up and coming yeah. up, how you came up, yeah. where you come from. It's consequences for people who say certain shit and think they gonna get up. Like it's, it's just how that you gotta you stand right. on you that shit. On you it. do. You do, and then some. Some boxing people just get it like they get it messed up. Like, yeah, it's boxing, but you know, stay in the boxing lane. Yeah. Stay in the boxing lane because, like, outside that boxing lane, it, it get ugly. Sure. It, it really get ugly for sure. Like, I ain't. If we on boxing times, I'm on boxing times for sure. And I don't want to be on nothing but boxing time with a boxing nigga. Now, now to get back on boxing time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For, for sure, keep it boxing. You, you at you at a, you at 130 pounds right now. You you are in one of the hottest divisions in the sport. Um, but we know you got Hector Garcia. That's we, we've been talking about that for, for a little bit now. Right. Besides Hector Garcia, who you see as your toughest competition at 130? Toughest comp. I think the nicest out of the champs right now is. Uh, uh, shock. I think he's the nicest out of the champs right now. Um, Navarrete a bad motherfucker. Navarrete a bad motherfucker. I ain't gonna lie. But he can't fuck with me though. But he, he a bad motherfucker. I knock him out. He ain't got no defense. 
He almost got knocked out his last fight by... He did, by... by Liam Wilson. By, by Liam Wilson, Wilson yes. Yeah. Liam on collar, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he, got, man, he got hit with some shit. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I'm saying, like... I hope no more, like... Don't get me wrong, his defense is his offense. Yeah. Like, he just a punching machine. But, bro, I'm a clip you if you come in and, like, come on, bro. Or you just gonna have a headache because I'm gonna be ping, like, ping, ping at bing.com all night. Yeah. Like, for yeah. real. Like, like, for real. But I think out of the champs, um, shock the nicest. I, I definitely wouldn't mind fighting him. Um, and I know he wouldn't mind fighting me. And then, like, it's a thing where, like, all right, we can eat. I know, I like, I've seen him from when we was amateurs. Yeah. And I want to say, I think it was the 2009 National Pal, mm-hmm. I think so, when he uh, qualified for the Olympic trials. Yeah. Ain't nobody think he was going to win that, John. Yeah. But I was right there. I was like, man, you got this, bro. And then um, I, th- I won the championship that year, too. I think, oh, I got Bronze, one of them. But um, I was there, like, I done seen some good amateur fights. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't think I was right. But again, like, I know Shock, and I know Shock would like to fight me just like I like to fight him. Um, and we, you know, we make that money together. Yeah. I'm gonna beat you, but we're gonna make that money together. Yeah. Um, uh, and then I love to clean up Navarrete. If, uh, if he beat Oscar Valdez, I've been wanting to fight Oscar Valdez. Um, they asked me to come to camp one time, but I politely declined because I wanted to fight him. Yeah. And so uh, I've been wanting to fight Oscar Valdez. Oscar Valdez is a great champion. Um, who else at 130? I got it. So, you, you know, uh, I think we, we spoke about this a little bit earlier, man. So, you know, obviously, you talk about big fights, paydays. Yeah. Um, I think a fight that a lot of people are not talking about besides, you know, a, a certain group of the boxing fans uh-huh. is um, you versus Gary Russell Jr. You oh, know yeah. That's a, that's a change in the guard. You know what I mean? D.C., Maryland, however, mm-hmm. you want to, however you want to put it. That's a big money fight for you, especially here in the city. I'm yeah. sure you've got a you know, decent relationship with Gary, but how, would you would you entertain something like that? I mean, would you? I will for sure. Like, if it makes sense, especially if it makes sense. And I know if it makes sense on his end, too, that he would. But we, I fuck with Gary. Like, I, I fuck with Gary hard. Uh, like, he, and don't, he, he nice too. <laughs> him yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. You gotta think, but I come up from looking up to him. Yeah. So, yeah. like, he was one of the guys that, when I was an amateur, you heard about him, like, my hand. Was it Beijing? I think so. Come on. Was it Beijing? Um, he was on the 08 team. Like, yeah, I think that was Beijing. Yeah, yeah. like, and like, damn, this motherfucker out of China. Like, that's yeah. something that I seen him in the gym. I spar with his brothers. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I actually physically know who this man is, and he's doing something in the sport that I could do something. Like, I come, I come from looking up to him. So, like, that's that'd be major. That'd be a big fight, especially for the city, especially from, uh, especially for the like the whole area for real, for real. So. Say he grab a he grab a belt, yeah. I grab a belt. Yeah. It could be like a million DC Super Bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That should be cool. Rick, Rick Ross had a song called "Idols Become Rivals." Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Um, how, how can you even prepare for something like that? Like you just said, this is a guy that you kind of looked up to in, in, in a certain aspect yeah. on your way up, and now is again we not looking right at it because you got business to handle. Mm-hmm. But that's something that could be. This year, later, next year, possibly. How, how you train? How you prepare for something like that? Man, like I told you, man, my my vision is tunnel. Like when it comes to that focus, that's it. That's what I do. Like, you can ask him. Like you know, I, like when it comes to that focus, they be like, oh, you coming out? You doing this? You doing that? And you already know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you already know. I want to put you in the chat. Yeah, to play. like. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's different with me, bro. Because this what this what I've been doing since I was a kid. And then like once I, you know, this like once we decided that this is what I'm gonna do for a living. This my this my means of eating. And like this what I do to provide for myself. And obviously, if I fight Gary, we are gonna eat regardless because we both gonna get paid. But if I prevail, the doors is 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ex- expand yeah. that opportunity. So, you know, that's that's what I look at it as. Like, it's, and I want to be the best. I ain't gonna lie. I'm I, I want to be the best. I just like want to be the best at everything. Man, when we was coming up, and, when we was coming up, bro, we played football together. We played basketball together. I mean, we didn't play basketball together because I left. When, when you that came. Was that was a great decision. That was one of the best decisions you made. <laughs> <laughs> but when I left, he, start, he like started in the spot that I, that I left. Don't try to nah, <laughs> what, bro, you, came, you came to the team. You ain't well, take my spot. It, it, I mean, you I ain't, like, no, like, you didn't take my spot. I didn't play no more. Yeah, but like the way you said it though, it's kind of like. Man, that's why I fixed it. I just <laughs> said you came to the team. Like kinda, I like, left. Like, yeah, like, all right, my man gonna take my spot. <laughs> 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 I beat him. He won running back. We can run it back. Um, even though we we ran twos at we ran twos at Ray House. Was that on your team? Nope. Yes, you were. I was on your team. No, I was playing with Ray. It was you. It was you and Al. It was you and Al. Y'all won one game. No, y'all won one game. Stop playing. I ain't unload the clip the second game. Stop playing. I ain't, I ain't unload the clip the second game, bro. Call him. Call him. Now people can't remember. Call him. We was one and one. We didn't run the third game back because y'all was tired. Come on, Yo, bro. You ain't about to grab me like this. I'm an Uber for real. <laughs> I ain't about to keep letting you. All right, all right, look. Yeah, I don't want you. We, after this, bro, we can oh, call man. Ray, bro. That's what I'm saying. But what I was getting at was, like, you know, I wanted to be the best at everything, like, even in football. Like, we was on a championship team. We went to, what, four championships? Yeah, 52 and, and two. 52 and two. Like, I come from winning. Like, that's what, that's what I do, bro. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not real good at losing. So that's the football. Was you playing or was you playing or was you on the team? Man, nah, I was, <laughs> I was I him was on that. Out there. I was him on that field. Pull back too. Yeah. Pull back. I saw him with a face mask. Man, that shit was legal back then. That's how you did it. Nah, but he was fighting over the door. I ain't even gonna lie to that one. Yeah, fifty-two and two. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When. He'd go from, he'd come from the boxing gym mm-hmm. to practice, game the next morning, back to the boxing gym. I understand. Like, it was it was other football players, too, on our team who mm-hmm. would, like, go to the gym, work out, because they might have to lose weight. I ain't never do it, but. Hey, who? I, I, I had, it. what, basketball game before. I had a football game, but before a couple of fights, yeah. and they was just like, man, they was like, and my fa- my father would be, especially if it was like a, a fight in the city and all that, my father would be like, yeah, and we, and we just came from a football game. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so like, that's how it was. Like, I really, I was, I was really on that. Like, I always wanted to win. What shit, like, uh, you being a father now, because of Mari, how, how would you go about, like, like, as far as, like, boxing? Like, you know, would you... Would you put them into boxing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, because I know a lot of people don't even want to put their kids in boxing. Like, even like football, like a lot of contact sports people be hesitant. But like, how you feel about? It? I mean, obviously, probably good. But. I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, um, I want him to do all the stuff he want to do. Like, he gonna do something though. <laughs> he gonna, he gonna do something. But if he don't want to box, I'm cool with that. I ain't, I already got my nerves high with my little brother when he be fighting. And he won, and he the best fighter in the country. So, <laughs> so, um, and like, if my son do box, I'm not gonna be his coach. My father gonna be his coach. So I don't, cause honestly, I don't think I'd be good at separating being a dad from being a boxing coach. Which my dad do very well, like, you see them boxing father and son tandems, they be going through it or they having problems or they don't last, shit like that. You gotta think, even like, not just today's, but in the history of boxing, you got not too many people lasted with their father. Like, I think Joe Calzaghi probably the only one. <laughs> the only one, you gotta think Roy had his dad, that ain't work out well. Shane had his dad, that ain't work out well. Floyd had his dad, they on and off. There's a whole rack of boxing tandems that his father and son didn't work or had problems. Even Tio and his father, like, they work in the ring, but outside of that, obviously, they got their 
issues and they, they should be on camera. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why do you think y'all work? What, what, what do you think is the difference? Uh, what I just said, my father know how to separate being a coach from being a, like a father. Like when they come, when they come home, like especially when I was a kid, like that boxing shit, that shit in the gym, it ain't really come home. Like he was a dad, um, it ain't it ain't really come home. He wasn't really on my ass like that. Um, pause. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, he wasn't too. He wasn't going too crazy about boxing in the house. Man, you gotta think. Boogaloo was my coach. Uh, for those who don't know, my cousin, Coach Bernard Roach, he was my coach um, all throughout my amateur career, all the way into 2017 when I was a when I was a pro um, before he passed away. But he was the one that was like on my back. But he was also the one who always told me that. I'd be one of the greatest to ever lace up a pair of gloves. And I really believe him. Like, and I'm gonna make sure that, like, I'm gonna make sure of that for sure. Oh, um, when, you, when you talk about your father, you talk about your pop, you talk about this uh, no excuses boxing gym, no excuses promotions, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you think your father gave his just due in the DMV? Maybe not how he should, but he don't do it for that. And that's the, that's the, that's what make him thrive, for real. Like, he do it for what, like, his, his sole purposes is to help who he want to help out. And not just the ones he wants to, but he give other people opportunities. You got to think, uh, he started a promotional company when boxing wasn't really, like, Flourishing for pros down here, he giving them a platform and a um and you know like a, a, a opportunity to get them fights, get the get their records up, get they you know what I'm saying, get that working that they need and you know that's that's crazy. But on top of that, we got a gym not only for professional fighters. He got 50 kids. Yeah. Got like 50 kids, we got two gyms. Mm. My father run both of them. Mm. And he got 50 kids. And that was my, that was my cousin thing. Um, my, he, went, along with my dad, they built no excuse from the ground up. And me too, I'm taking, I'm yeah. taking ownership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking ownership credit. Yeah, yeah. Cause I was the one really in there clean. Like we had, we got our gym. If you come to our gym, you'll see that it ain't no state of the art building or none of that. Um, it ain't ventilated, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got, we real got a doghouse gym. Like, we built that gym from the ground up, from scrap to what it is now. And then that's, like, them conditions make champions as you, like, and I'm gonna be the first one to come in that professionally. But we got my little brother, I'm gonna say, what, eight, nine time national champion. Mm -hmm on the um, USA team, in the, in the second spot to be for, on the Olympic team. Um, Benjamin Johnson, 12-time national champ, ain't lost in I don't know how many years. Um, he's on the USA team, on the youth team as well. And um, he's actually old enough to fight in the Olympic trials um, for whatever that is, you know, that's, it's USA boxing yeah. on some bullshit politics. Yeah. But, um, and we got multiple, multiple, multiple national champions, all coming from the same gym, all coming from under the same roof. So something he doing that's, that's, that's really proof, like the proof is in the pudding for real. Now, now when you talk about the, the, the origin, you talk about the legacy, right? Um, if anybody see you fight, they sit on your trunks, R.I.P. Boogaloo, right? Mm -hmm. um, after the Jamel Heron fight, during your post-conference, you were saying, hey, listen, I came up short but I know I made my cousin proud, right? Talk to me about how his passing affected you and what legacy are you trying to continue on now that he, well, obviously he's passed, but that fact now he's not with us anymore. No so, man, I ain't had this conversation in a long time. Uh, it's crazy, man. I can still feel him, like, you know what I'm saying? I know he with us today. Um, that's a guy I've seen for 13 years, almost every damn day in my life, almost every single day. 
for 13 years straight. Now, nobody could take the place of my dad, but if there was another father figure in my life, it'd be him. He told me so much about boxing, and told my dad so much about boxing. You gotta think, my father wasn't a boxing coach. Yeah. My father was the cameraman. Yeah. He turned my father into a coach. Like, he like, man, you gonna help me. He ain't really asked him, he like, I need some help. And you gonna help me. So he taught him how to be a trainer, a coach. So like, he told me so much, and he told me so much outside of boxing. Like, his purpose was boxing and for to be the best, and he always said that winning ain't the only thing. I mean, winning, winning ain't everything, it's the only thing. That was his, that was, that was something we took, we took and ran with. Um, and we, we flourished off that, but, Outside of boxing, he was like such an amazing person. Like if you know him, like said, know him. Like everybody who, huh? <laughs> Man, he gonna get his flies. He wanna be. <laughs> I gotta say it like that. He put it on for sure. Like I mean, come to the, come to the ring, cowboy boots, button up jeans. You know what I'm saying? Like fresh cut, little couple, couple weight, couple waves on top of his head. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but you know what I'm saying? Like when you ran into him, like if you knew him, you knew that like he'd light up the room just like with his energy alone. Um, a couple words, yeah. everybody know he, he in there. Everybody know they done spoke to him or you know what I'm saying? Like he'd light everybody day up with just his with just with his energy. So like that's just like an energy that's that can't be replaced, but I still, you know what I'm saying, I can still experience it through his spirit, like, and that just fueled me to be the champion that he be. Like, we still on the journey that he started, yeah. we started together, but, yeah. you know, he was the pioneer. Yeah. And, you know, my dad didn't switch shifts, then he became the driver, but, my fa and I want to commend my father, too, because, like I said, he don't just train professionals, he trained professionals and about 40 kids yeah, yeah. on top, like, that's, yes, yeah. on top of that, that's what he do, so, like, that's what I got, like, I got to, I got to do it, I got to finish this, you know what I'm saying, I got to finish that chapter for him, I want to be the champion that he wanted me to be, that we started our journey yeah. to be, yeah. so. Speaking of starting that journey, man, obviously you said that was your coach from the amateurs all the way to, you know, um, his passing. Um, how do you think his tutelage in the sport uh, affected your style? Obviously, we know you were a slick fighter, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, again, I always talk about the performance you put on against Renee Alvarado. That's one of my favorite performances all time, just from a, a fighter, period. It's not how slick he was looking in there. Um, how do you think his tutelage affect your affected your style? Uh, he... He wanted me to understand every aspect of the game. And, um, and he always told me, you can always learn from me. Like, don't think you can't learn from like people that, he, he didn't necessarily say like under me, but I learned from everyone. That's what I learned from him. I learned from everyone. I learned from novice fighters. I learned from little kids. I learned, obviously I learned from professionals, but, um, from him, he like molded me to adapt to any and everything. Yeah. And coming up, even as a kid, like we was always ready for the next level. Yeah. So that's why I was able to fight for a world championship when I was 23, 24. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he just he molded me to be the best at everything not just good at everything, but the best at everything because everybody ain't the same. Everything ain't, you got people that's gonna come bro, you got people that can fight like a mother, you got people that can box like a mother. It just, you know what I'm saying? So that's what, that's what we kind of capitalize on. It's just like my mental, he shaped, he shaped my mental to be ready for everything. So that's how, that's how my style adapts to whatever's in the ring. Who would you say your style is closest to? Uh, I don't know. I, people gotta tell me, and then I could be like, uh, 
Maybe, because I take bits and pieces from a lot of fighters, like, especially my favorite fighters. Yeah. Um, shit, I really try to take stuff from my little brother. Like, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he a dog, bro. Like, <laughs> he a dog. Like, it's just crazy. So. so, so with that, right, you say you take some stuff from different places. Now, you I would say that you a fundamental fighter. Not so, I oh, would yeah, say cool. that you got the fundamentals. For sure. But again, like we talked about earlier, you got that wide ass looping right hook, bro. Now, I don't know what's up with it, but when that shit land, it get dangerous. How is it that you so tight with your defense, you know what I mean, hands up, you under, you slipping punches, you getting under punches, but that hook come out so crazy like that, man. What, because, what, 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 what's up? See, there's the thing, there's the thing. Uh, you asked my father what's my favorite punch, right? Or he, he asked me. I'd be like, hey, you know, my right hand. I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to crank. I'm trying, <laughs> like, he like, no, left hook. I said, that ain't my favorite. How you gonna tell me my favorite? Yeah. He's like, it's, that's your best punch. Yeah. I said, why? <laughs> he said, look, he talking about something. If you ever notice, all the people like you hurt, or like most of the people you hurt, you put down, yeah. or like it come from the left hook. Yeah. He's like, that's your strongest yeah. punch and your most effective punch. Mm -hmm. But I do be trying to kill people with this right hand. Like, <laughs> I be trying to put them down, but mm -hmm. I lie to you not, because I just feel like, and this is probably how a lot of fighters feel, yeah. but if it connect, I just think it's going to be like a Deontay Wilder yeah. thing. Even though, <laughs> even though I know it ain't going to, you know what I'm saying? Even though I'm not cracking like him, I swear to God, every time yeah. that's how I feel. Look at my last fight. When I was seeing that motherfucker that right hand, yeah, yeah, no, bro, no, I watched that before we got here. bro, he was ready to go, but they just so, I don't know why they like, so, all right, my record, this shit, man, <laughs> 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 I'm back in the game, what? I ain't seen, I ain't seen my, my I ain't, last time I got my haircut was April. <laughs> But they say I love it here. <laughs> but um, I obviously I don't got a lot of knockouts on my record. But I probably I hurt every fighter I've been in there with. So that's what the thing is like. And once they get hit, they be man, they be running. The only person that ain't run was Renee and uh, Okendo. Yeah, yeah. Cause Kendo's a tough motherfucker. But after that, after I, if I touch one person, they gone. Like. They really trying to get out the way, and obviously ain't nobody gonna let me hit them. Yeah. But it would happen to all that. Yeah, this nigga can't punch this and woo woo woo. Obviously, I, I can a little bit. Yeah. And my, my last, my last thing I got for you, man. Um, like you said, we came in here, we doing this. A lot of people don't know who you are, man. Um, what you want the world to know about Lamont Rose Jr.? That I'm gonna be here for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to be here for a long time, and I might be your favorite boxer in a little bit. I might. <laughs> I just might. I'd, I'd be Hector's ass, and y'all going to be like, man, that boy nice. But um, I just want them to know that like I'm cool like this. Like You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't all too caught up in the, the flashes, the lights, and all that. Like I'm been like this, going to stay like this. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool. Um, but I want to be champ, and I want to be the people's champ, too. So like, but I want to do more stuff like this. Like I'm going to probably create a podcast with my little brother, the perfect antagonist, to <laughs> to have a show with, and have like you know just spaces like this. It don't even got to be like called an interview or a talk or whatever. But spaces, the whole space like this. Like I want to do that, and I'm for the development of children and neighborhoods like that I come from. You know what I'm saying? Just like, you know, me and Sid come from the same area. We came from, we come from uptown DC. Okay. So like, you know, my dad and his dad grew up kind of like, you know, crossing paths and stuff. Yeah. So I've been, I had ties with Sid since I was, before we even knew each other. And we met each other when I was like, what, 10? Yeah. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I'm, one, I'm for the hood. I'm for, you know what I'm saying? I'm for the betterment of everybody that look like me, that come from where I come from. That um, and you know, just expanding any and everything that I could touch. You know what I mean? Anything y'all want to add in or? 
It is fight days, man, so I can book my trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Thank the God, stop playing, man. Man, <laughs> tell me about it. It's a, it's all right though. It's it's only prolonging the ass whooping. It's getting me better. It's giving me more time. I can go eat a cheeseburger after this. You know what I'm saying? You know, 45 to 30 day extension. And right now I'm in blast. You know what I'm saying? If y'all ask the person behind this camera, what the fuck I've been doing? <laughs> y'all gonna see. <laughs> y'all gonna see. No, I'm excited though. I'm excited. Um, I'm very excited to be back in this world title hunt. I mean, not the hunt, but like, to be here at the door so I could kick it through and I could be champ and then I could bring a fight home to y'all and it'll be big and yeah, we're gonna start it off like that. This is like, you know, my legacy been started since I was born, but the turn up point right here, what they call that, the climax? This is it. This is the climax right here. So stay tuned and um, we're gonna be back and my haircut look nice. Nice. I'm gonna put the barber info in the what what you wanna call it, the credits? Credits description, something. Something. I'm gonna put yeah, I'm gonna put it in if it's on Instagram, I'm gonna put it in the caption. If it's on YouTube, I'm gonna put it in the caption. I'm gonna put it everywhere. Yeah, I'm next. Alright. I got this bucket on for nothing. Nah, for real. <laughs> we could get out of here, man. Um, I ain't mean to take up all y'all time, but this is me. <laughs> <laughs>